Hello everyone, it's Maha. Thank you so much for joining me here once again on my channel. So this is going to be the first video out of a new series that I'm beginning on my channel called Astrology for Pagans. And in this series, I'm going to be taking different concepts and ideas from astrology and then presenting them to you in a simple and practical way uh, which you can hopefully use in your spiritual and or personal development practice. So I'm very excited about this video in particular because as you probably already know if you've been following my channel, I'm obsessed and so passionate about the study of correspondences. So the study where planets are linked to different plants, minerals, and different body parts in the human body. And surprisingly, from my own, uh, own research, I have found very, very little information on crystals linked to any other planets in the chart besides the sun. So you probably already heard of uh, zodiac crystals. Now the zodiac crystals are linked to the sun sign in your birth chart. But there are a lot of other factors that are important and that make up your personality. And two of those are the ascendant and the moon. The ascendant and the moon in the birth chart are two very important parts of your personal makeup and your psyche. So in this video, we're going to talk about working with crystals linked to your moon sign, otherwise known as your lunar crystals. So I've structured this video in three parts. In the first part, I'm going to just briefly talk about the significance of the moon in the birth chart. And then in the second part, I'm going to share with you uh, how I work with my lunar crystals. And then in the last part, I'm going to share a list that I've compiled with some of the different crystals that are linked to the different signs in the 12 astrological signs in the moon in those signs. So I'm going to go over the moon in all the 12 astrological signs and give you just some of the crystals linked to those. There are many. I'm going to only, I've only selected a few and I wanted to provide that list just so that this video can stand alone on its own so that you don't really need to go and do a whole bunch of research. Having said that, I'm going to provide some of the books that I think will be helpful for uh, doing further research on this topic and the topic of crystals and just any of the books that I will mention will be listed in the description menu for you. So I think we're ready to get started. The first thing you want to do is get a copy of your birth chart if you don't already have it and find out which sign your birth moon is in. I've uh, put a link also in the description menu uh, astrolab.com is a great resource. It's a website where you can put in your information and get a, an accurate calculation of your birth chart. So you can start from there. And one thing I learned when I was in education school was never to assume anything, S never to assume your students know anything. So I'm not going to, in this case, assume that my viewers have seen their birth chart before. I'm just going to assume that you've never seen one. And if you haven't, don't panic. It's not going to be complicated. You just need to go onto that website, put in your information, your birth information, and then you it'll tell you what sign your moon is in. If for some reason you can't find that, all you need to do is just go and um, look at the wheel and find the symbol of the moon, you know, what the crescent moon, find that and see what sign it corresponds to. You can't really see that here, but you'll get when you, you'll, you'll know when you get there. And all the astrological glyphs for the signs and the planets can be found uh, on the internet. You can just Google them. Okay, so let's get started talking about the moon first. So in Western astrology, the moon in your chart is about your feelings and your emotions. And it's so much more than that. So the moon in your chart can point to the parts of you that are perhaps more unconscious. 
and it can give insights into the deeper, even darker parts of your personality. It's about your family, your roots, your home, and the environment that surrounded you in early childhood. It can also point to the past, uh, whether that's in this lifetime or in other lifetimes. It also relates to anything to do with the mother and mothering in general, and your relationship to the mother, and more importantly, your experience of mother, the experience you've had with your biological mother. That can be uh, true in actual reality or not true in actual reality. Your mother may or may not be how you perceived her, but it is the moon in your chart describes how you actually experienced your mother. It is about your memories, your intuition, instincts, and your, uh, your instinctual emotional reactions. Now, we must remember that the moon on its own doesn't have any light. So the light that we see coming from the moon is the light that's reflected from the sun. So in essence, the moon by its nature is reflective and it's reactive. So it's how you predominantly react in emotional situations. It is also your soul food. It's what you need to feel nurtured what you need to feel safe and secure in the world. And the sign that your moon is in can also point to your relationship to food and eating. So as you can see, these are just some of the things that the moon is about. And this is why it's very important and a very important planet in the chart. So it's a good idea to get acquainted with the sign that your moon is in. Uh, really get to know the sign, get to know what the moon in that sign needs to feel nurtured, to feel comforted, to feel safe in the world. A really great book that I recommend um, in really getting to know the essence of each of the 12 archetypal astrological signs is a book by Stephen Forrest called The Inner Sky. and. What I love about this book is that it really he really paints the atmosphere of each sign. Uh, he doesn't. It's not a cookbook book where you have um, how the moon behaves in every sign. Uh, instead, you have just the signs. Each individual sign. He goes through what the sign needs, the lessons of the signs, the shadow aspect of each sign, and it's really well written, simple to read, easy to understand, and really to get a full grasp of each sign. That's a book I recommend for all beginners and for anyone interested in astrology. And then a really great book for getting to know the moon and working with the moon, which is my, it's my go-to book for anything to do with the moon. It's a book by Donna Cunningham called Moon Signs, A Key to Understanding Your Inner Life, I believe. I'm going to put these books, like I said, in the description menu for you. And this book is really phenomenal. It's very, it's very comprehensive. It covers basically everything to do with the moon. It's an older book. It's written, I believe, in 1988. So it's been around for quite some time. And Donna Cunningham is, she's a, a legendary. She's a pioneer in astrology and she's written other books. And in this book, she covers everything from working with the moon in uh, the different phases of the moon and the moon in, as the moon goes through each sign, uh, through the calendar year. And then also she talks about the moon signs and your birth moon sign and the lessons you can learn from your birth moon sign. Um, there's even a chapter called how to mother yourself. And there's chapters on what each moon sign needs to feel nurtured. And she talks about uh, lunar burnout, which is a term she uses when you've pushed your moon a little too much. And then she talks about how to work with those things. It's a really 
really great book. The language it's written in is not, it's not the um, metaphysical new age language that's very popular right now. It's just more of a practical language. And I mean, I, I really love that book. So it's a good idea to get to know your moon, the sign that it's in, to really understand it. And you might find that there are parts of you that really resonate with the moon, and then there's parts of you that resonate with your sun. Some people I've heard actually feel more connected to their moon than they do to their sun sign, which is interesting. Uh, and one more thing, nothing in the chart is isolated and on its own. Everything is connected to the entire chart. All planets are in relationship with the rest of the chart. Nothing is separate and nothing is separate on its own. Even if a planet is uh, completely isolated, it still behaves uh, in a specific way in the chart. So we always look at the whole chart. And so well, the reason I'm saying this is to always remember that if you have like, if you have a moon and a certain sign, that doesn't mean that you're automatically going to resonate with everything that sign uh, stands for. A perfect example is uh, two people who have moon in Capricorn. One of them is Adolf Hitler. And one of them is the Dalai Lama. So completely different people, right? But they have moon in Capricorn. So it's how the individual uses the energies in their chart and it's also their consciousness which is all uh it's a it's a topic for other videos which i'm going to explore hopefully later on in the future in this series with you and mm, you will find you don't you don't necessarily actually need to know anything about the sign that your moon is in if you want to work with the lunar crystals it's, it's just it's just good to know it's just good to know for yourself and it will also help you to connect to the crystal intuitively. It will help with that. For example, I have the moon in Capricorn and one of my crystals for moon in Capricorn is blue lace agate. And I love that crystal so much. I just always resonated with that crystal very much. Just, just love it. And I was working with uh, that crystal in the technique that I'm going to talk about in a moment with you. And I found that I was having dreams where, where I would come up with certain aspects of my moon sign, the moon in Capricorn, and I would kind of put the two in together, the two and two together, and kind of find out what blue lace agate is telling me for my moon sign. And to be honest, every time I read anything about blue lace agate in the books and online and stuff, I never really felt that it was n true for me. For example, with that crystal specifically, there's a lot of links between the throat chakra and speaking your truth. And I didn't really feel like that was necessarily true for me. But working with this uh, crystal in the way that I'm going to describe in a minute, actually revealed so many things that I wouldn't have otherwise known. Okay, so now let's go ahead and talk about how we're gonna work with the lunar crystal. Okay, so now let's get to the fun part. Enough about theory, let's get to practice. Now I'm gonna share with you how I use my, how I work with my lunar crystals. And this is something I've kind of developed throughout the years from my own personal research, my own personal experience of working with the crystals, and also my own intuitive guidance. So you're welcome to use it uh, the way I'm going to describe, or borrow any parts of it and incorporate that into your own practice if you wish. So first thing, when I get any new crystals and bring them to my home, the first thing I do is I like to let them sit outside in the rain and I live in Vancouver, Canada, and it rains a lot over here. We're never shortage of rain. And I just, it's my favorite technique really, um, for any crystals, of course, that are not soft and that won't melt in water, because I feel that it's just refreshing to the crystals and, you know, nothing better than rainwater rather than tap water. 
I'd rather use rainwater. And I even collect rainwater. I have collected rainwater, which I always keep in storage, and I use that as well. If it's not raining, I just soak my crystals in there. So that's what I usually do when I bring any crystals to my home. If they are too soft, and if I can't put them in rainwater, then what I do is I use the mirror technique. This is a technique that I haven't really heard many people talk about. And it's one that I learned from a book called Crystal Enchantments by CJ Conway. It's very simple and I really love it because it's so simple. So basically all you do is you have a, a mirror and I have one on my bedroom altar and you just place the crystals on top of the mirror. And what happens is that the mirror absorbs the negative energy from the crystal and then reflects it back out into space. So that kind of thing. And I do that with my crystal jewelry as well. I find it so easy. You know, I just put it on the mirror and 24 hours later I'll grab them. And then what I always like to do with new crystals is sage them. I find sage very powerful for cleansing. And so I do that with all my new crystals. Now, the cleansing technique I use for working with my lunar crystals is a little different. So what I do is seven days, seven to 10 days before the full moon, I'll start my cleansing. And the cleansing process is seven days. I'm gonna talk about the significance of the number seven in a moment. So I'll put my crystals either outside in the rain, and trust me, it does rain for week, even two weeks consecutively here in Vancouver. So I might put them outside and let them sit in the rainwater for a week. If it's not raining, I will just put uh, the crystal in my collected jar of rainwater on my bedroom altar. And I'll, I always like to um, light a candle at night so the candlelight is also charging the crystal at the same time. And so I do this for seven days, seven consecutive days, soak the crystal in water. If for some reason I don't have rainwater, I use tap water. And then what I do is just put a pinch of salt in the tap water. It's, it's kind of a longer, more gentle process of cleansing the crystal. And I actually learned this technique, the seven day technique first in a book called the American Indian Secrets of Crystal Healing. And in here, he talks about Luke Borgo, talks about the seven day cleansing technique. And that's where I got the pinch of salt from. I, I've ruined way too many crystals, you guys, in salt water when the salt was too strong. So I don't want to do that anymore. I usually just do a pinch of salt and I let the crystal sit for seven days. And then. The reason I said seven to 10 days is just so you have a little, a few extra days if you're not ready to begin working with the crystals. And did I mention it's seven days or seven to 10 days before the full moon? Because you're gonna start the working, the actual working on the full moon. Now, uh, what you can do is find out what sign the moon is in that month or whenever you're ready to work with it. Um, if you can find out your birth uh, sign, the birth moon sign, then you can plan maybe to have uh, the moon in that sign. That would make it very powerful. So it, for example, I have moon in Capricorn, then if I can find out when the moon is in Capricorn on a full moon, that would be super powerful. But of course, that's not always, um, very practical because then you have to wait for a long time or maybe sometimes you have to wait for a while so the next best thing is to find out when the moon will be in the same element as the your birth moon sign so for example moon in capricorn capricorn is an earth sign so i can find out when the moon is in virgo the full moon is in virgo or in taurus and that will make it harmonious. Having the same element will make it harmonious to your own birth moon. If you can't, uh, if it's still not practical to get the moon, the full moon in an earth sign, for example, for me, that I, I, let's say if you have a moon in fire sign, if it's not practical to find other fire signs, then you can find, then you can find another 
moon sign that has a uh, similar energy. So the yin and yang energy. So there are four elements. The air, air and fire are yang, for example, and earth and water are yin. So I could find with my moon in Capricorn, um, moon in any water sign, if that's more practical. If I'm just so anxious to start working with my moon crystal and I don't want to wait uh, until the, the full moon goes in Virgo, Capricorn, or Taurus, I can look for when the full moon is in Cancer or Scorpio or uh, Pisces, the other uh, elements, water elements, yin elements. So you kind of know what I mean. And when you find when that moon, the full moon is, when you're ready to work with it, then you, you, you do your process of cleansing the crystal seven to 10 days before. And so if you start cleansing a week before the full moon, then that would mean that you're ready to charge your crystal in the full moon on the eighth day. So a week before you start your cleansing and then on the on the eighth day, that's the full moon. That's how you'll um, calculate it. So when you finish the seven days of cleansing on the eighth day is the full moon. Or if you have a few days in between, that's fine too. Um, if you have a few days in between, what I like to do is just to put my crystals um, inside a Ziploc bag, which I didn't bring here to show you. I usually have a Ziploc bag full of um, dried rose petals uh, that I've collect, harvested and collected and dried lavender. So I'll just let the crystals sit in there or I'll put them directly on my lavender. And I'll insert the picture here to show you both that and the crystals being charged in, under candlelight. And I just wanted to add that you don't have to use lavender or rose. You can use any loose incense that you like. What you do is find uh, which herbs are linked to the moon and then you can just let the crystals sit on top of that or in a Ziploc bag. For example, Roman chamomile is linked to the moon. Sage is sometimes linked to the moon. I use lavender and I find uh, lavender is, for me, connected to the moon. I use lavender and rose because lavender is, I find, a very nice herb to use when I want to work with the moon's energy in a peaceful manner. And rose is always good because rose stands for love. And anytime I work with the emotions, I like to use something that is has a loving energy. So after you finished charge, um, cleansing the crystals for seven days, you're ready for the full moon. Now on the night of the full moon, what I do is just put my crystals outside or on the windowsill to bathe in full moon for the night. And then I'm ready to work with the crystals the next day for seven days, seven consecutive days. You're gonna be working with the crystals by starting to sleep with the crystals. You can sleep with the crystal directly on your body, which is what I do, but a lot of people aren't comfortable with that. You put it under your pillow. If you're putting it under your pillow, maybe you can just hold the crystal in your hand, look at it, just connect with it a little bit before you fall asleep. The more you connect with your crystal, the more you, the more it gets embedded in your subconscious mind, and then you'll find that you'll have dreams about it, or you'll just come up with really great insights throughout the day. So it's very simple working with a crystal. Basically, you sleep with it for seven nights and carry it with you for seven days near your body, anywhere near you, like if you have pockets, um, maybe you wanna to touch the crystal frequently throughout the day, look at it. Um, if you're a woman, if you have a bra, you can have it inside the bra, some women like to do that. Just have it close to your body, close to you as much as you can. If you're working, you can place it on your desktop. Um, no, don't forget to carry it with you as you're going through your day for seven days. And the significance of the number seven is that I found that it's, well, first of all, seven is a magical number for me and it's the seven days of the week. It's the seven um, 
planets that we can see with the naked eye. So astrologically, that kind of made sense for me. Also, the seven days of the week, astrologically, uh, as far as the calendar year goes, it made sense. And also, there's a there's a, an author, a crystal author, by the name of Michael Geiger. I'm not sure how to sp uh, pronounce his name. G I E N G E R, I believe. I'm gonna uh, put one of his books down below as well. He's he has really great books. One of them is, I think, called Crystal Power, Crystal Healing. I'll link it down below. So he's done a lot of extensive research on crystal healing. And he has actually worked with quite a number of people and done surveys with how they found the crystal affecting them. And he found that most people reported that the third and the fifth days were the days that they felt the effects of the crystal the most. So he suggests working with a crystal for seven days, and that's where I borrowed this idea from. Working with a crystal for seven days to really see how they affect you. And I decided to do the seven day cleansing, and like I said, this is all for my own intuition. Um, and the seven day working with the crystal as, as a kind of ritualistic way of working with the lunar crystals because the moon itself to me is, is it, its energy is one that lends itself well to working ritualistically. So I, uh, I decided to do it that way and I found it really powerful and for me, um, I didn't specifically found, find that it was always the third and the fifth day but it, there is something about that third day that I really sensed the power of the crystal working. I don't want to talk too much about my own personal experience because I want to allow you guys to watch this video and try it out for yourself and to see what you, what you get. So that's how I use this and I want to see if there's anything else. Right, so I wanted to say to work with one crystal at a time. I mean, it's like anything else. Whenever we introduce a new diet, a new exercise, a new medication, a new supplement, we always want to know how that, which one affects us and how. So it's always good to separate the crystals to see how you work with that one particular crystal's energy. So it's all, it's very simple. It's, it's not anything complicated, just um, the seven day cleansing and seven day working with the crystal journaling, connecting with the crystal throughout the day, and you'll find that you'll have dreams too that will give you deep insights like what I was saying before. And now what I want to do is give you uh, five crystals that I've chosen that align with each of the 12 signs, the moon in each of the 12 signs. I'm not going to go over about, in detail about what these moon signs represent, but I might talk a little bit about why the crystals are that way. My resource for this was The Crystal Zodiac by Judy Hall. This is a really great book and honestly it's the only one that I found that covered other crystals in your chart besides your sun sign. In this book, it, it she covers crystals linked to your sun sign, your moon sign, and your ascendant. And it's really great. It's very easy to read. It's all in color. I don't know if you can see here. It's illustrated in color. Oh, you can't see the lighting there. And what I like is how um, she goes through different categories about your moon crystal. So for example, moon in Virgo, in each sign she goes through your moon crystal, the, why, she, why that moon crystal is um, dedicated to that sign. The positive qualities of that moon sign and your hidden needs, exploring your hidden needs, which crystals align with that, overcoming emotional blocks, nurturing yourself, developing your intuition, your past lives, and releasing, and there's a ritual, a releasing vows ritual. So for each of these categories, she's listed the crystals uh, and why and how they can assist you. For each sign, there's quite a bit of, quite a number of crystals with linked to each sign. I think there's about, I think there's over 20. I've only selected five because I don't want to make this video too long. And 
what I found is that what you probably also notice is many of these crystals are the crystals that really also represent the sign in each sign, the, the sun sign in each sign, uh, and they'll have that energy. And that's because, uh, like I said before, the moon and the sun are two very visible, two very important not necessarily visible aspects of the personality so for example with Aries one of the moon, one of the crystals here is bloodstone and carne carnelian is another one and those are very Martian crystals with Mars energy and a lot of times the crystals linked to Mars energy have high content of iron and the ruler of Aries is Mars. So you'll find that uh, some of these crystals will resonate with you, with your sun sign in those signs as well. And like I said, it's, it's a lot of times people do feel more connected to their moon sign than their sun sign. So that's, you know, that's one of the, one of the theories that I came up with. But then again, she explains in the book how each of these chosen crystals can assist your moon sign. Okay, so I'm just going to read. Aries, Ametrine, Carnelian, Bloodstone, Blue Lace Agate, and Aventurine. Moon in Taurus, Blue Tourmaline, Rhodonite, Malachite, Apache Tear, and Green Calcite. Moon in Gemini, Aquamarine, Blue Topaz, Ruby, Sugilite, Snowflake Obsidian. Moon in Cancer, Moonstone, so that's a good example because, well, Cancer is ruled by the moon, so Moonstone here makes sense. And some of these crystals also will really resonate with the moon energy. So Moonstone, Selenite, Pink Tourmaline, Dioptase, I love Dioptase, and Chrysocolla. Chrysocolla has a very feminine energy, very goddess-like energy. And it has copper content. Anytime you have a co high copper content, you can also think about Venus, the planet Venus, like Malachite, for example, I mentioned it's linked with Taurus. Malachite has a high content of copper, also linked with Venus. And Moon in Leo, a pop, a I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right, a pop of fillet, hiddenite, larimar, calcite, and rose quartz. Moon in Virgo, amethyst, blue topaz, azurite, smoky quartz, and jasper. Moon in Libra, aquamarine, celestite, sugilite, watermelon, tourmaline, and iolite. By the way, everyone, my voice, I don't know if you've noticed, it's kind of scratchy. I was sick, really sick for a couple of weeks, which is why I haven't made videos in a while. So bear with my voice. Scorpio, moon in Scorpio, Apache tear, hawk's eye, hawk's eye. I can really resonate with that. It's very Scorpio even though it is also linked to Sagittarius. Um, the hawk itself is one that can be linked to Scorpio. So hawk's eye, smoky quartz, black obsidian, labradorite. Moon in Sagittarius, azurite, lapis lazuli, topaz, wolfenite, lepidolite. Moon in Capricorn, snow quartz, blue lace agate, serpentine, moonstone, galena. Now, I want to just mention something about Moon in Capricorn because I have that Moon in Capricorn. So Moon in Capricorn is very, very far away from its home. Moon resides in the fourth house in Cancer. So across uh, Cancer, right opposite 180 degrees is the sign Capricorn. And every time you have a planet that's very far away from its own sign, it feels a little cold, a little uncomfortable, needs a lot of nurturing, and so I've found what I've noticed from reading this book and from looking at these crystals and working with some of them is that these crystals are, they assist with what the moon needs. Different ways, like I was talking about the moon and the different moon, the different things that the moon represents, what the moon needs in different ways. So emotionally, uh, what it needs to be nurtured, these crystals can assist with that. They not that the moon in Capricorn, for example, is weak or anything. It's just to bring out what it needs to feel more at home, if that makes sense. 
So moon in Aquarius, aquamarine, rhodonite, celestite, chalcedony, selenite, moon in Pisces, angelite, aventurine, fluorite, kunzite, and sunstone. That's a very interesting one, right? Sunstone linked to the sun, Pisces, not at all what we think of when we think of the sun, but Pisces is the last sign of the zodiac. It's the sign of the deep ocean, the collective unconscious, the mystical sign. And sun, sometimes Pis moon and Pisces, I mean, Pisces is the hidden part of the chart, uh, the part where, you know, some, some things are hidden. It's, it's, it's called C the house of secrets. So over there, the moon needs a little bit of light, which, as you can see, is how the sunstone can assist with what the moon may need to. Maybe the moon in Pisces, not always, of course, like I said, it depends on the rest of the chart, but moon in Pisces could perhaps be prone to depression or to dark feelings. So here the sunstone can lighten that up. And I think that's all I'm going to say. So I really hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you really get something out of it. Please comment. If you, feel free to comment and tell me what you think. And if you have any suggestions for any videos that you'd like to see for astrology for pagans, let me know. I will take that into consideration. I'm not sure when I'll be able to make um, the next video in this series. It's sort of a long-term project that I thought I'd start. And then as I go along, as I feel guided to, I'll add more videos to it. One video I know that I really want to do and I'm excited about is working with uh, finding out your the phase that the moon is in in your birth chart. So the moon phase in your birth chart, the phase that the moon was in the, when you were born and what that means and how to work with that. And I also want to do a video on balancing the elements in your chart, how you can balance them through everyday activities and, and lots of other things. So thank you for watching. Thank you for being here. Sending you lots of blessings, lots of love. I'll see you in the next videos. Bye.